Hello everyone and welcome back to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around we're going to be doing a collaboration cast of a 1v1 game on Semwa. Today we're going to be looking at Hitler, apparently as the American, what the heck is going on there? Uh, versus his Wehrmacht opponent, Morello, on the right hand side. I'm accompanied by another German uh, that goes by the name of Sergei. So Sergei, welcome to the show today. Hello, good to be here. Good to be here, yes indeed. It's just going to be a short cast, short and sweet, about 16 minutes long. Uh, obviously not going to be pulling out too many uh, twists and turns and stuff like that, but we're going to be talking about some very special topics. One of them going to be the importance of timing and getting things out at the right time, so knowing when your opponent will get stuff out, okay? And the second message is, well, I guess we'll be getting the game started and I'll keep on talking. Okay, so we're at the five second mark and we're going to be starting in three seconds, so in what? three... <laughs> no. What? Oh no! What? I thought we already started when you both were no! beginning. Oh. Wait, what time are you at? <laughs> <laughs> one, one minute. Oh, go back! How? <laughs> okay, okay, wait. Game. Okay... <laughs> Just bear with us one moment. Okay, so now that Sergey has finally sorted out his uh, game, his computer. Okay, right. So we're at the five second mark and we're going to be starting in three seconds. So in three, two, one, and go. Oh, Six, finally. seven, eight, nine, and ten. So we had a bit of a failure to start there and uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. Well done, Sergey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Morello, hi Hitler, hi how, hi hi how, what? <laughs> Morello is just uh, talking away in the chat there. Right, so today's other special topic today is going to be your heroes of this game. I basically want to know if you guys want to send me a response, if you do a response or leave some comments below, who your heroes were or are. Um, from this game. Now, heroes are very, very important. Basically, I have been playing this game for about four, almost five years now, and I remember watching Sergeant Morello, the guy, the Vermont right player right now, way, way back then. So he is my utmost idol. Uh, this is the guy that I basically learned how to play Company of Heroes from, and I have absolutely every respect for him because he's a great player, almost flawless, and he just, he knows everything off by heart. So I am so glad to be actually doing a replay of him. He's some, for some reason, disappeared from the Company of Heroes uh, scene, so if anyone can actually find him or know what's going on with him, please tell him to come back. I sorely, sorely miss this guy. Right, so uh, Sergey, let's focus on the game. Um, your game is started, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Good, we have progress. Okay, yeah. so what's happening with your American guy? Uh, yeah, nothing special here, just two Pios and one Rifleman out yet. And yeah, now he's building the second rifle squad. Mm, he's moving forward, he's moving forward, okay. Well, uh, looks like Morello has captured both the uh, plus 10 fuel point and the plus 10 munitions just outside of his base. And look what he's actually doing, he's using the MG42. First unit out of the Verma Corps, MG42, building <laughs> or capturing a fuel point as well. Uh, very interesting, we never see a MG42 or a sniper or any support unit capturing, but Sergeant Morello is doing that for whatever reason, he is damn confident, okay? Um, pretty cool that he's doing that, so the second squad out is another MG42, so a double MG42 opening. And what you guys might have noticed was the Vermont quarters was being produced by two Pioneers. So MG42 is a bit cheaper than a Volksgrenadier, so maybe you can build that Vermont quarters a bit faster and get it out, uh, you know, a few seconds quicker. Um, Sergey, it looks like you're trying to circle me here in the building. Uh, yes, and maybe it's working, but your side gunners are pretty effective. Well, look what you're doing. You're just uh, going around my building. <laughs> you're just going, you're just trying to m make a few laps around it. Yeah, but no, he was too slow. Yeah, well, no, a he's lot still of damage getting away there. with it, but those pioneers are going to be uh, hitting those, hitting these riflemen quite hard here. I mean, this is the important bit that these uh, guys need to keep on going around in circles, but it looks like that's going to be stopped because we've got that second MG42. Oh wow, double MG42 suppressing both of those Rifleman squads. Yeah, well, and the Rifleman are taking a lot of damage here. Mm, they indeed are. Bad thing about two MG42 starts is that it's going to be quite immobile. Yeah, I mean, look at this there, they chased away the Rifleman, why not? But overall they're going to be quite immobile, uh, not really in terms of capping. But I don't know, I have this feeling that Sergeant Morello is going to use these MG42s for capping. Uh, especially now when the Rifleman are chased away, or no, maybe not. We'll see. 
Uh, it looks like you're capping on the right hand side. Any uh, anything else coming in terms of build orders? Um, not yet. No, he is just building more. Oh, he's refreshing his rifleman and getting grenades now. Grenades. Yeah, uh, I guess saying. against the, the the MGs in the buildings. Uh, grenades are very very good. Um. The uh, thing about MG42 is like not even in buildings, sir. I mean, sometimes like when they're on the ground, just because usually the MG42 men in a squad will actually be quite close together, so they can easily throw a grenade right in the middle of them, just kill all of them. I mean, it's a nuclear pineapple after all; it does so much damage. Yeah, it does. It's <laughs> awful if you're Axis. Oh, I know. It's a, it's a big difference between a Grenadier Grenade and just <laughs> the Nuclear Pineapple. So, let's see, we've got the uh, Rifleman taking shelter on the center side, but loads and loads of Riflemen surrounding these uh, this MG42 like no problem. MG42 having to retreat out of there. So what else do we have from Sergeant Morello? We've got two Volks out on the field. Two Volks indeed. Gonna be capping way north side. Looks like the north side was actually decapped for a short moment there. Hmm. But just what is there anything else coming out from the uh, Americans though? Just more riflemen's. More riflemen, more vanilla stuff, right? Yeah. So I suppose maybe he would have to think about you know doing something else. <laughs> uh, sounds like a plan, yeah. You would think so anyway. Um, but for whatever reason, we've got some combat going on in the center with the riflemen. Uh, just staying in the church, despite the Volksgrenadiers having a large advantage, green cover, and also they have long distance advantage. For whatever reason, trying to hold that um, center church. So I suppose this is where the timing, the lesson I was saying about timing and trying to uh, tech up at the appropriate time. So not, my, now might be actually a good time to start thinking about uh, teching up and also constantly harassing. I'd like to see the Americans with more points. All right, so looks like those nuclear uh, pineapples are being used to some effect at the moment. And there is even more MG42s. Not good for the American. But the American... <laughs> I don't know what Morel is doing down south. He's actually blocking off that bridge. It's pretty cool. I'm uh, just preventing the American from coming that direction, so they have to go along the right-hand side. <laughs> also got a flanking rifleman squad on the center in the cemetery. Which is trying to take out MG42s here. Very, very close to actually taking out one of those right there. Very, very close. But a single rifleman squad needs to <laughs> be very, very careful. It's still, it's going to have a hard time by itself. Especially versus all these Volkswagen ideas and snipers and MGs and everything. <laughs> oh, God. Yep, exactly. Snipers and all that. But at least the MG42 is gone. So this is a perfect opportunity for the Americans to move up if they so choose to do that. Um, the machine gun team is just moving about. Just moving about. But that sniper, God, that sniper is really being annoying, isn't it? Yep. Like they are every time. <laughs> and we... Oh yeah, we got more riflemen, finally. More and more riflemen. Well, the second MG42 was taken out. Um, that was the nuclear pineapple. So not only being used against the guys in buildings, it's also on the ground. As I was saying, what the hell? <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. I think the rifleman just charged through a tree. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, They're private right. <laughs> <laughs> The tree, nothing shall stop them, not even a rooted tree. Um, so, looks like that Nila Pineapple taking that uh, MG42 out slightly earlier there. But that sniper is just being so damn pesky, just killing off these riflemen one by one. And it's just get, making these uh, riflemen have a very difficult time. So, all this uh, action at the moment is centered in the, well, the center, right? So, kind of a bit of losses for the Vermok. They're actually being pushed away from the center at the moment. Uh, left side, nothing really much happening. Just some pioneers being chased away. And what else are the Vermok doing? Well, not really much. They've lost a bit of their MG, the, uh, MG force. All they have is two Volks, MG42, and a sniper. Hmm. All right, so at this point, I would be maybe thinking if I was the Vermont, hey, maybe there would be some sort of motor pull fast rush or something like that. Because we have, we've only seen grenades, but no bars or anything like that. Remember, grenades are a lot cheaper than bars. Um, however, the American doesn't have that many uh, things in terms of points, do they? 
Um, no, they just have the points um, on the on their side of the river and this little um, strategic point is connecting to the middle part of the map. Hmm. Yeah, they really just get, <laughs> Yeah, they just get 16 fuel, uh, fuel and 21 ammunitions. Well, the Wehrmacht has about 26 fuel at the moment, so yeah, that's kind of a little bit more. Um, I don't really know what the American is doing, to be honest. I mean, he's just keeping in the middle and trying to throw grenades all the time. Uh, to some effect, but still, I'm not really sure if he should be doing that. I think his big problem is he just gets a 228 manpower rate, so he's barely able to, to refill his squads. And so how many squads yeah. does he have? Um, he has five rifleman squads and one pioneer. But all these riflemans are nearly dead now. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so wait, let's switch on over to uh, Hitler and see what he has. 230 fan power rate. Right, I'm, I don't know, like I always thought that the upkeep was per man. So it must be per squad maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. I was always thinking that it depended how many men, like actual men you had. That de that made the upkeep change, but maybe it's the actual number of squads. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe that it's like that. Um, well, let's see. The American has been chased away from the center, but still not really much in terms of capping. He's decapped that uh, fuel up north, so of the Wehrmacht, Morello is quite low on his income at the moment in terms of fuel. But that's being TCAP, being captured by a Volksgrenadier squad, so no problems on that front. But I like what the American is doing, he's trying to move up along the left hand side. Still, that center uh, manpower point is quite undefended, and needs to be a bit careful of that. Hmm. Well, is he, uh. <laughs> Man, the American is still at barracks? After yep. 10 minutes. 10 yep. minutes and still at barracks. Oh, man. <laughs> Just uh, not really the way to go, I suppose. Now, Morell is moving in force up north. And just perfect maneuvers by him. Just uh, Pioneers, Volksgrenadiers, and also the MG42 in the back. Perfect, perfect maneuvers. This is exactly what I mean by learning from your idols, your heroes. Uh, I, this is exactly where I learned it, uh, the whole strategy about Folks up front and then MG42 in the back. I learned that exactly from Morello and his replays. So you know what guys, I'd highly recommend it to all of you. Um, especially the newer people out there. It's just find and adopt someone. <laughs> adopt a pro. Exactly, the pros need you. Adopt a pro. There's a lot of great faces on game replays. It just uh, would be a great thing to uh, just actually look at people's uh, game replays. Take in some uh, ideas of what they're doing and then apply it to your own gameplay, right? So, Americans chased away from the left hand side and they're now capping it in the center. Okay, fair enough. But what do we have from the Wehrmacht? Well, we have exactly what the Wehrmacht needs a Sturm Armory and a Puma coming out. Teching, so a Puma coming out, does the Americans have anything to counter it? No, they're just building the supply yard now. And they don't even have stickies, I think. Uh, yeah, they're really big problems now. Very big. <laughs> do they have what do they have, what do they have in terms of uh, fuel? Um, here's 99 fuel. Um, pitching um, one. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's okay. Um, well, I don't know. He definitely needs to have gotten that motor pull out earlier. Uh, have more of a higher fuel income. But he still could have afforded it earlier, and that's what he really needs. You know, even a single M8 could counter Puma, unless the Puma was upgunned, but... Um, hmm, not looking good. He could definitely have used an AT gun by now. Yeah, definitely. And maybe some stickies or something like that. But here comes the Puma, and all he has is infantry! So this comes my point of teching and knowing when to uh, bring it out on the field. So this would be an excellent time to have that motor pull out, but, you know, nothing counters this Puma. What is he gonna do? Absolutely nothing. He's gonna lose. <laughs> well, nothing much more to say about that. Uh, doctrinal choices, nothing selected by Morello, just sitting there at four command points. What about the Americans? Yeah, he hasn't any... Um Doctrinal choices as well. Okay, so Sergey, if you were gonna choose something for doctrinal choice, what would you go for? As American? Yes. Uh, maybe Rangers now to counter this. That would be a good idea. 
<laughs> That's exactly what probably a lot of people would do. Um, go for Rangers, uh, Infantry Doctrine, left hand side, um, Rapid Response, and then up to Rangers. Likewise, you could maybe even go for Airborne. Airborne would be a little bit costly though, because they do need those uh, munitions, for example. However, yeah. you know. I don't know. Well, there you go. Look, it looks like the Americans just losing all of his squads now, and everything's just going down the uh, the uh, toilet for him. And well, he can't even build a motor pool. That's the thing. He can't even build a motor pool because well, he's just getting owned in his base. That's the thing. For some reason, he's still fighting on the center front, despite how his base is just being raided by a puma, um, and also rangers out on the field. Okay. <laughs> how successful they will be. Well, that's not too bad. That's quite a bit of damage. <laughs> yeah, oh, but he comes away. Shot. I know, he's going away. Oh, man. One more shot could maybe finish it off. Probably would finish it off, actually. You know, that's a, not gonna a mine, happen. A mine on that bridge would be really nice. Yeah. But I, I think he's spending all his ammunitions on grenades. Hmm. You know, I think a whole grenade strategy with Americans could work. But... The thing is, you need to tech up faster, and also you need to uh, make sure you have more resources on the field. I don't know. I think it's more effective as a Panzer Elite. Panzer Elite? Like grenades. Well, I mean, what, to kill like a whole squad, like a yeah. man squad. Yeah, you could definitely do that, I suppose. But, I mean, when it's almost always guaranteed that a Wehrmacht will have MG42s. I think those grenades are perfect. Oh, no. A second Puma. <laughs> oh, God. And they're focus firing on the Rangers, I believe. Well, that's what they need to do. These these bazookas are being really accurate. Have you noticed that? Yeah, I know they're they're hitting every shot. Oh, okay, now they failed, but fine. Oh my god, <laughs> those folks grenadiers really took a hard hit there. But those uh, exclusive <laughs> folks grenadier squads. But those bazookas, they're just usually they're so infamous about how inaccurate they are against Pumas. Well, so. don't say it too loud. <laughs> Oh god, I know, I'm just jinxing it, but, uh, um, really, Morello is just owning on this front. Oh, what, that's a replay over? <laughs> oh god. Yep. Ah. So I was, well, I told you guys that was going to be a short and sweet replay. I suppose maybe not, not that sweet, maybe a bit sour, because the American just didn't absolutely get owned there. But the main me two messages of this game was to tell you guys about the importance of timing, and also your heroes. I think it's just, uh... A very good message to tell all of you guys, just um, adopt a hero, go on game replays, go check them out, go see what they're talking about, a lot of great personalities on there and a lot of pro replays. You'll definitely find some uh, absolutely great people out there such as Seth and um, uh, I don't know, Bud Wise and all these other great people uh, that you can watch. Right, so I guess we'll call that a show with Sergey. <laughs> Nothing much else to say there. Not really, no. Yep. So, of course, guys, until next time, should be tomorrow anyway, I will see you later. Bye-bye.